happens when we meet two students who look way too old for junior high, Trevor and Rick, who are members of an exclusive club, the Rigmas. Apparently, they only host the coolest parties and the best women. Lisa and Zach are invited to a Rigma party, and they tell Zach that after school that day, they would explain what it would mean to pledge. Uh, so the Zachless intro cold open has a couple of douche nozzles wearing those nylon button-up baseball jackets from the 80s. Mine says... Actual black kid invites Lisa to party. That's true. <laughs> Mine says that there's a black person exclamation point yep. and he gets to talk to Lisa he and does then stuff. black person can be bullied? Question mark. <laughs> well yes. Yeah, it, a yes. This episode a... passes like the racial Bechdel test. Yeah. I would say that uh something about this open really felt like a regular Saved by the Bell open. Mm-hmm. As in just seeing those jackets that seem very much of the style of like the regular Saved by the Bell and Lisa, yeah. they're talking to Lisa and she looks similar. Yeah, this is like the first time she gets to open an episode. Mm-hmm. Probably the only time. <laughs> These guys are a pair of Rigmas and they have invited Lisa to a Rigma party. So what the hell is a Rigma? It's rig mud for her pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a junior high fraternity. That cannot be well, a thing. Well, I'm not asking. Well, for I'm not asking what they are yet. I'm asking <laughs> what rigma is, like the oh, just word, a word rigma means. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, like, I'll Google it. is it supposed to be a play on like thing. sigma? I yeah. assume so. If you had a, a fraternity that was like. Sigma Greek letter Greek letter, you call them like sigmas. Yeah. And so I I'm wondering really... if this is supposed to be like a twist on that. Yeah, I think they're using the R because fraternities are known rapists. Oh, well, <laughs> canon. All right. Yeah, they're the raper sigmas. <laughs> and yeah, the big uh, the big takeaway there is not only is one of the rigmas a black dude talking to Lisa. But there, we sort of get that idea from the school dance episode that Lisa's, like, popular and desired by men. So wait, you guys. This just in from our crack research team. I googled Rigma. Uh-huh. The first result is an urban dictionary. Uh-huh. And it says, cool gang on Saved by the Bell <laughs> <laughs> that had the best parties with the hottest 8th grade girls attending. Uh, so yeah, back in the cold open where we haven't left yet. Uh, after inviting Lisa to their Rigmas party, these other two guys then offer Zach the opportunity to pledge the Rigmas. Wait, I want to say one more thing. Is those two dudes totally stare at Lisa's ass as she walks away? Oh yeah, they totally Really blatantly. Out. Yeah. So, I'm still uncomfortable with how young these children are and how sexual. Also, there shouldn't be such a thing as a middle school fraternity. Yeah, I guess we should talk about that at some point. Do we point. want to what talk about that going now? On right now? What is this fucking I thing? I want to on the record that I am off the record with a middle school fraternity. If, I, <laughs> if a bunch of college kids told you to hang out at the cool parties, they're going to break you. <laughs> well, these guys are not college kids. Yeah, to be you. fair, I think as we go on, I feel like... This might be a high school fraternity. Well, yeah. still, still is not a thing. <laughs> and they will rape you. Right. But yeah. it's not a oh, thing yeah. either, so I can't really say they'll rape you. Cause... No, I knew we were going to talk about this for a long time. Um, <laughs> well, because it's basically the college years episode about fraternities. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With some different formulas. Although um, you can see how Zach applies what he learned from this experience to his college years fraternity that's true. experience. That's true. And how Screech has to learn nothing. But yeah, so are these kids in high school? Well, that's watching watching this as a kid. I remember thinking that like, so Zach and Lisa and Nikki and all them—they're in middle school. They're in eighth I, grade. They're in eighth grade. Yeah, specifically eighth grade. And so I watched this and always thought that the two Rigma guys were like freshmen in high school. Right. Now, having said that. There's nothing within the episode itself that offers any suggestion of that whatsoever. No, there is because when the twist happens, they said, yeah, we, we got have... dared to find an eighth grader yeah. and do this, which implies that he's a, a, a lower classman than them. 
But does that mean then that this school is a junior high and a high school? I think they're just walking in from an adjacent high school. <laughs> That's what I've always assumed as well. Yeah. well and I have some questions about that later on, yeah, too. It's weird. I mean, I should say that growing up, my elementary school and middle school were attached. Sure. But you didn't. It was never mingled, though. It was very separate stuff. Well, these kids are definitely at least in ninth grade, though. That much we agree on, right? Yes. I think yes. That they have their scrotum has dropped and they have pubic hair. Right. And they totally ignore Mikey and Screech, and I think that's one. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yes. Yes. So what and we can the... agree on is that they have pubic hair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh. That's kind of so, yeah, the joke I'm that. The joke that takes us into the credits is Screech, like, blows them off, and they're like, we don't fucking care about you anyway. And then when he finds out that they have parties with hot girls, he's like, wait, wait, I want to join. And he runs after him, and that's supposed to be funny. Do you think they have parties with pizza and soda? <laughs> yeah. I want to hang out with these guys. <sighs> they, they drink jolt, and they get really uh, popped up on caffeine. And let's let's be clear. Obviously, in high school... There are, like, groups of like-minded individuals who hang out. And obviously there are, like, more formally organized, like, a- after-school clubs and groups, you know, whether it's tech crew or debate or whatever. But I'm not aware of anything that's run like a fraternity, basically. No, I mean, it's just... Frankly, if they got rid of the jackets and the name and if this was just, like, the cool crowd, yeah. it could have worked. Well, except for right. the specific hazing wouldn't have worked. Yeah. But if yeah, it, they would have had to have dialed it back and made it a little bit more general, like, we'll let you hang out with the cool kids if you make a fool out of yourself. We begin after credits with another Miss Bliss voiceover telling us that playing school clubs isn't for everyone, and for all their orders, ridiculous stunts, and overcoming with constant humiliation to be cool, the cool kids that make Zach Morris such a shoe in to sell a shoulder to earn the com- coveted title of cool kid. Rick commandeer Belding's morning announcement and demand for Zach Morris to stand up in the middle of class and perform Swanee for George Gershwin and Urban Seizure. My lord, we're only three minutes into this episode and already I'm beginning to think that these writers have no idea what songs these kids are kicking into in the 80s. So that's, we come back from the opening credits and Miss Bliss is giving us this voiceover about Compromise. what a pain in the ass it is Compromise. to <laughs> pledging at school clubs and how pledging a school club is like being a teacher. And that's where I'm like, wait, so is this like, is this a thing? Is this like a, like, do the teachers <laughs> know about the rigmas? Is- so then uh, the we hear the rigmas over the loudspeaker. Are like <laughs> they're apparently breaking into Belding's office, and this is where I'm like, so wait, did they come over from the high school just to break into Belding's office? Wait, and they... somebody have caught them? Like usually, when you're older than all the other students in the school, somebody removes you, right, David? Uh, no comment. But uh... <laughs> more importantly, at Bayside, Belding's office is just like. A room mm. adjacent to the main hallway. I really noticed so that in this episode. It's easy enough to like <laughs> break into it and commandeer the loudspeaker. But this school, this show's office is like a real office where there's like an antechamber and then like an office and there's people in it. And every time we're there, that we s- there's that yeah. hot ass blonde and like Milo's her. hanging around. Yeah, it's crazy. not like it's just an empty room that these guys yeah. can wander into and steal the loudspeaker. Yeah, you're making me nostalgic for that fucking principal room where you can just walk in and also there was a suggestions box you could poop in. Well, once there was. Just one time and everyone pooped there. But, uh, it, it's not like you couldn't figure out who this was either, even if they, like, snuck out before building it. And this is still a school-sanctioned club, though, and, like, everyone's on board with, like, well, this club's gonna, like, break in and use the loudspeaker to haze some kids, but whatever. Right. Well, so they make Zach sing Way Hey Down Along the Swanee River. That was awesome. And Zach's wearing, like, a helicopter beanie and a shirt that says, Don't Feed the Pledges. But the problem with his singing is they're not there to see it, so how do they even know if he did it? Why would yeah. he do it if they weren't there? <laughs> Are you saying that they're not omniscient? <laughs> I have a lot of problems with the things they make him do and the way it's all carried out. That would be exhibit one, which is they tell him to like, now, Morris, how do they know he's doing it? And why do they fucking care whether he's doing it or not if they're not there to experience it? 
They just want him to have a real bad time. <laughs> and and this is where Miss Bliss is just kind of like, oh, kids, the things they'll do to join a club. I know, she's like, not she's... like, sit the fuck down, I'm teaching a class. She's not like, what the hell is this club doing? Why are they hazing? Maybe I should investigate this. She's Maybe like... I should stop Zach from disrupting these other students who are taking a quiz right well, now. Fuck those guys, they're not Zach. <laughs> For real. One thing we find out is nobody gives a fuck what Zach's doing. Miss Bliss questions Zach that if doing a song and dance from the early 20th century is really the best medicine. But Lisa keeps going Zach that if he keeps up doing more vaudeville numbers than most of the teens of the 80s today have never heard of, he just might be Rigma material where they will be playing George Cohen, Urban Burling all day long. Or in the words of Socrates, it's the pits. <laughs> Miss Bliss says that she will fill in for Mr. Belding in exchange for a new set of encyclopedias. Apparently, the Board of Education is like, well, after all these years of Mr. Belding being the principal, we should probably set up some kind of an arrangement for when he's not available and have, like, a substitute principal. Well, I mean, and um, they could have a vice principal like most schools, but whatever. It's whatever. not Milo, we know that much. <laughs> and so he, of course, taps Miss Bliss to to fill in for him. Did you just say he taps Miss Bliss's ass? Mm-hmm. And uh, she is uh, she agrees to it so long as she gets a set of encyclopedias, which we learn are his encyclopedias from his house. Well, yeah, so that's weird because a she says I want a brand new set of encyclopedias, and he says okay, but the queue is holding up his table at home, and which the would then imply keeps spilling soup. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a moment. Right but now, I'm saying that would imply that these are not brand new encyclopedias. Also, doesn't this school have a fucking library? I guess not, dude. Well, and why does everything have to be so conditional? Like, she should just be able to have those encyclopedias. Yeah. Right? Without having to wheel and deal. They spent all their money on that game show quiz and Mrs. Bliss's Merkin wig. Yeah. We return for the cafeteria where Zach is now hiding from Trevor and Rick. Zach asks Lisa and Nikki not to let them know that he's hiding under the table, basically in plain sight. That even Belden could spot him from a mile away. Once the two Brigmas enter, Screech rats them out, and Zack is hereby ordered to do 40 jumping jacks. The writers can't seem to maintain any continuity or flow for one minute because apparently jumping jacks is somehow cruel and unusual punishment for these students whose activity is commonplace in physical education class. That is not funny. Be all you can be, Zack. Be a Rigma. And Mr. Belding subs for Miss Bliss and tries to change everything about Homeroom. He tells some stories about him and his wife, but no one wants to hear it. Zach comes in shirtless with swim trunks, and everyone agrees that it's gone too far. I'm guessing that they are more lenient on dress codes than sitcoms. And it seems like Mr. Belding should probably be teaching Miss Bliss how to be a principal, but instead he's going to be in her classroom. Except like, he uh, doesn't know what Homeroom is. How does a principal not know what Homeroom is? So is that what Miss Bliss teaches, Homeroom? Did we I solve mean, it? I mean, I think so, yeah. So, I think Miss Bliss just teaches homeroom, like, to start the day, and then she has the history class. Is that what she teaches? We don't know. Like that. Yeah, we like don't social know studies or something there. like that. Drag yeah. class. Now, that doesn't explain why Mr. Belding seems so confused about homeroom and what its function is, because you'd think the principal would at least be on top of that. Mr. Belzog has never been more incompetent than in the <laughs> Miss Bliss years. He hasn't. He doesn't know shit. But do you guys like know. him better as a teacher, or what about that one time when he was the student? Oh, he's much better as a student. He's been a teacher and he a did. Uh, he did hang out on the bed of one of his students in high school. So yeah. I mean, that's a pretty <laughs> shitty principal right there. So hold on. So. One is that I like that there's an actual explanation, like this is still early enough. Yes! Where like, why don't we just have a regular substitute, they asked. I was literally typing, why isn't there a substitute, when he's like, there's actually a shortage on substitutes, so I have to fill in. I'm like, all right, you win this round, show. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they bothered. But I also really liked the, um, just the presence of Belding in the room was, I thought, very uh, real. Like, I just had it's kind of awkward. Because Belding... How he, like, lingers in the doorway, and Nikki has to tell him to come in the classroom. Just said how he doesn't really know how to talk to the students, and that yeah. there's this wariness among them that, like, your principal is all of a sudden teaching. It's like the highest authority in your school yeah. is now you're uh, acting 
teacher and his sort of inability to communicate well with them, it just felt very true. But my only problem is most principals start off as teachers, so he shouldn't be this bad at it. Uh, but he would be sort of detached. I think, I don't know, it makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. His his role as a principal in this series is realistic. In this specific Good Morning Miss Bliss series. In Good Morning Miss Bliss, because yeah. as we yeah. have covered, once it gets to stay by the bell, <laughs> he basically does nothing a principal does and only does things a principal should not do. And of course, as Belding is wont to do here in class, he proceeds to get too personal with the kids yeah. and tell them about the time that he met his wife. Oh right. my god, could you believe it? He just started talking about how weird her pussy is. Yeah, her weird. Which I'm pretty sure is like the third or fourth time we've heard the How I Met Mrs. B story from right. him. And like across all the different series and whatnot. And what was it this time? They met at a Halloween party. Bobbing and their retain they tried to bob for apples and their retainers got hooked together. I guess they just mean like Save by the Bell pretty much never is able to like put a vibe out into a scene. Like there's never like a tone, it's just always the same and you always just know how people feel because they're saying it or exaggerating mm-hmm. it. But this, like the sort of weirdness of him being there, there's like sort of silence and there's like a tone to the silence in the scene, and I don't feel like you ever experience that at any other point in the series. Right, I guess it's Belding coming to terms with hanging out with the kids. Yeah. Awkward tryout. I will point yeah. out that A, Zach shows up late. Yep. And yep. B, he's in a bathing suit. Yeah. Yep. And Mr. Belding does not care about either of those things. Nope, that's the next thing. Zach yeah. comes in, and he's, uh, Carrying his towel and he's wearing his swimsuit because this is apparently a Rigma's thing. And, and yes, it all. And his little baby knops are out. And mm-hmm. I'm like, too <laughs> young for me to look at them tiny little buttons. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Zach gets what he wants the Rigma jacket. But they tell him that if he wants to wear it, he has to abandon his other friends since Rigmas only hang out with other Rigmas. Given this is Zach Morris, he hereby acknowledges his friends as expendable and completely goes along with it. <laughs> Why is it Belding kicking them out? They're clearly too old to be in this building. <laughs> they're powerful. You know, I think a they're a higher authority. This is supposed club. to be in the building. I don't know. I think they're a higher authority than Belding. Yeah. I mean, that I agree could be. That. Yeah. They got to use his loudspeaker. <laughs> no one says shit when they disrupt class. The yeah. cool kids' school has higher authority than the principal of the lame kids. Yep. And then Zach's like, hey guys, you know my friends. And they're like, no, we don't. And then Miss Bliss does a little drive-by and kind of like the interrupting the fight between Screech and Deke kind of a thing. But then she just sort of laughs it all off like, oh, boys will be boys when it comes to pledging. I had to eat live fish. Yeah. Do you think that Miss Bliss, that's where she got her taste for fish? And that's how she <laughs> met Tina? Oh. <laughs> so she had uh, sororities at her junior high, I guess. All the Apparently, fish. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, she even says something like, you know, in college I had to, you know, eat live goldfish or whatever. I'm like, yes, in college. college, Why, why is this happening in middle school? Why are you letting college students poach your middle school? (laughs) So, how much scissoring do you think happened in this sorority? All of it. Lots. Talk about it slower. Lots of scissoring. (laughs) (laughs) Minutes, you guys. Uh, so then the Rigmas, after Miss Bliss leaves, the Rigmas offer Zach his coveted jacket, but they tell him that in order to wear it, he needs to cut ties with all of his friends because Rigmas only hang out with Rigmas. And that seems like the kind of thing Zach would have known already before he started pledging. Well, you'd that. also well, think he'd know who's in the Rigmas and who's not, but apparently he doesn't know that. Okay. They go to a different yeah. school. How could he know? But then how do you yeah, know to begin with? I don't know. I don't know. No one knows. How is something more alarming, acting principal Bliss, is that you have a near naked boy running around school. What is this? <laughs> Maybe you're right. Miss Bliss is doing a better job than Mr. Belding as principal, to no surprise. And everyone seems to love her, and they're thanking her for her efforts, even just one morning in. Mr. Belding gets all butt hurt that nobody likes him and does the walk of shame. Yet, despite the fact that she still finds nothing odd about one of her students walking in near half naked, about the school, they still find her the most well suited for the position. Picky, picky, picky. Zach humiliates Mikey in front of everyone at lunch by exposing him to his crush, and he tells Lisa's parents about her wearing makeup. He shoves a cake in Nikki's face and tells Screech that they can't be friends because he is a nothing. 
His friends leave angry, unable to understand why he's doing all this to become a douchebag Rigma. The Rigma tell him that he is finally one of them forever. Aw, sociopaths. You gotta love them. One minute they love you, the next minute you're on their hit list. This was the best part, you guys. Oh, yeah. The whole series. <laughs> Even though, even though, did you notice that what he did to Screech seems to hurt Zack the most? Mm, yeah. I wanted like, to Like, he say, seems to feel the worst about what he does to Screech. I wanted to talk about that, too. Because in the later episodes, the Staple series, we get that they've been, like, best friends forever and they have this close relationship. But in the Miss Bliss episodes, you really get this tone that he's not even really friends with them at all. And yeah, it's just right. this weird kid in the class, and it's only in this episode that we get the same kind of friendship between Zack and Screech that we come to know later. Yeah. But everything we've seen up to this point will lead us to believe that they're not even really friends. In class the next day, his friends won't speak to him, and Zack acts like everything is okay because what he did to them in the name of popularity. Mr. Bowling loses control of the class and sends the kids to Miss Bliss to deal with it. Glad I don't have to handle this one. Back in Belden's office, Miss Bliss is swarmed to student extras as she gets an earful to try and get all the facts straight. Once Miss Bliss realizes that Zach was the instigator, she tells Belding to take him and the rest of the extras out for powder so she can deal with her young narcissist personally. Zach later denies all wrongdoing because they're jealous that he's a cool kid. Well, Miss Bliss writes him out a prescription for a reality check. He gets triggered that no one understands him just for following the pledge protocol. And Miss Bliss sends him away without punishment because being the lonely kid in school without four ex friends could actually tolerate him as punishment enough. Miss Bliss, just be fair. Expel him. Belding is jealous of Bliss since he keeps making things happen and everyone is very happy about it. Soon everything starts to fall apart and Belding acts like a total jerk about it. But he finds a common cure to his bed. We find that the Miss Bliss did not get approval from the school board on the request that she granted to the rest of the school's faculty staff. Ah, uh, what? I understand that certain school departments have budgets in place before school year to ensure that no one is overspending, but why the heck does she need to crawl to the school board, hand and foot for simple things like moving a crossing guard, car towing, or granting a teacher an excused day off? This whole day is really messed up, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> Zach finds out that he's not really pledging to the Rigmas, and he instead was just another sucker being used so the guys could get into the Rigmas. Brothers in Strife creeps for life. Zack demands they be friends again because he is bored and needs immediate attention to pamper his ego. With only a minute of runtime left in this episode, the others decide Zack has suffered enough humiliation and instantly forgive him because they have one more episode of bonding to do before they are clicked out of NBC. Showbiz is a bitch, ain't it? Two Rigma douches come over and spill the beans that they are Rigma pledges and their hazing was convincing an 8th grader that he was pledging the Rigmas. Which I would have been really surprised by if I hadn't read the Netflix summary of the episode. <laughs> oh shit, Netflix failed you. Way to go, Netflix. Net so it turns out after all of that, Zach was never pledging at all. But then again, how did these other how did the other Rigmas know these Rigmas were actually pledging somebody? Right, couldn't these two have just gone back to their pledge master and been like, yeah, we totally did what you told us to do. Yeah, and well, do they go to the same school? I don't know. <laughs> and secondly, maybe they should have spilled the beans on this before deciding to purchase a jacket for Zach. Yeah. Which is stupid. And Zach. Than ever. Yeah. And Zach talks a little bit here about how, like, he just wants to be cool and it's not enough to be friends with his friends. He wants like the <laughs> other guys to like him. And I feel like the, his friends should be like, oh, and then just leave him again. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, like, that's not that. a... <laughs> yeah. And this is like, this is the same thing. Like Screech talked in an earlier episode about like, can I tell the other guys that you said I was cool or whatever? Mm -hmm. I'm like, who are these other guys that yeah. they're so worried Do you about? Impressing? This is what leads to Zach starting to talk to the audience all the time. Like we're the other guys. Are we the other? Yeah. Oh, this is what the other guys think of me. What counts is Zach is back. 